maintenance man here with another contraption that Mr. Dog Poop made me build. I don't even know what to call it. But Mr. Dog Poop wanted to take a camera and rotate it through a scene, up over the top and back to the other side. How am I supposed to do that? So I went online to look at what other people were doing. And the contraptions they built are insane. One of them might even be 50 to 75 feet tall. That's crazy. I wanted something a little more manageable. So this is what I came up with. And now I'm gonna show you how I built it and how it works. So I built this in three primary pieces. One, this is a cross piece to hold the cross rail going across. It's two pieces of aluminum, three inch by half inch by about 12 inches long. Drilled four holes in it and bolted them together at right angles. Drilled four holes in the ends and attached these truss clamps. This piece is to hold the camera. Again, this is half inch by two inch, two holes drilled in for the truss clamps and one hole in the center to hold the camera and I just put a 3 8 inch bolt. This is half inch by two inch steel. I drilled a one inch hole in here and I welded a one inch shaft to that hole. This is about 18 to 20 inches long. I used two pillow block bearings, one inch inside diameter and two collars to hold it in place. The only welding I did was this piece right here. So this is all hand drilled. This piece rotates and we use one and a half inch speed rail. You could do it with one and a quarter inch speed rail. You could do it with one inch speed rail. You could do it with two inch speed rail, whatever you want. We thought it could manage a good 10 foot span. What we found out is there's a little bit of flex in these clamps and they tend to wobble a little bit. It's fine if you were going maybe five feet out and doing a 10 foot arc, but if you're trying to do a 20 foot arc, it starts to twist a little bit. And depending on how far out you're going, if you're going 10 feet out with your camera over the object, it gets a little floppy. You could put a Ronin on it and that would solve the problem, but we wanted to make it steady. So we're calling this prototype number one. It wasn't exactly what we were shooting for, but it's pretty damn close. If you're doing product shots, it's great. If you're trying to go over a group of 20 people, it's a little floppy. So we're gonna improve it in prototype two, but we're gonna show you what we did here in this model, because maybe it's useful to you. So we built this to attach to our doorway dolly. Drilled two holes, attaches to the platform. That's gonna allow us to drive back and forth with the dolly and get motion, as well as an arc from this. As you can see, it's as sturdy as our dolly is. It's solid, it gives us an arc, and then the next thing is to put our cross piece in. So we need a cross piece here, maybe up at the top. We're gonna to use our cross piece. That's going to allow us to attach to here and put a cross piece in. We wanna get this at a right angle. The clamps that we're using are about $3 a piece. You can get heavier ones for 10 or $15, you might replace these down the road with something heavier for now. It's a good way to figure out if it works. We're a bit limited in space here, so we're not gonna go out the full distance. This cross brace also works really well for counterbalance. If you need a little counterbalance on this side. To mount the camera, we just took a flat piece with a 3 8 hole drilled in it. 3 8 hole in the center and we attach a fluid head so we can gum 180 degrees around 
our subject. A little bit of twist and sway here. A little counterbalance would do that, but you're going to go slow, so you shouldn't have a problem. Obviously, it's going to take a little practice to get it right. There's a little bit of flex here in this pole, so the counterbalance can help that. We might actually want to put a push handle down here, put something on it in here that you can carry. The doorway doll is nice, but it is getting in the way of the shot. But as you can see, the concept is solid. We're using 10 foot speed rail. If you use smaller speed rail, it's gonna be a little easier to move, more stable. You could use it longer. The longer you go, the more rotation you'll get in the shaft, but it's a pretty windy day. It's hot, it's miserable out here, and uh, we've never used it before. So I think we got a pretty good shot. So in order to have something solid, I used the two inch piece of quarter inch thick pipe and hooked it right into the trailer hitch. This is a standard hitch receiver pipe. Did it about four feet long and bolted it to our plate. The plate has a one inch rod connected to a half inch by two inch steel bar and then clamped on to an upright. Upright then goes over to a cross piece. If we balance this cross piece with counterweights over here, this is going to stabilize it a lot more. The further out you go, the more twisting you're going to get. And we thought the pipe was twisting, but in fact it's the clamps that are twisting. So we put this bar here to be able to hold and stabilize it a little bit better. But one maintenance man can only do so much. I can't really hold it in all the places. So the camera mount, we just put a 3 8 bolt in here. We could hook onto a fluid head or directly onto the camera. Because of the wobbly effect we're getting from the twisting of the clamps, we went ahead and put the GoPro on to see if we could stabilize it a little bit better. Obviously not the ideal camera for product videos, but it will work. This is Schedule 40 pipe. If we use Schedule 80 pipe, it'll be a little bit better, but if you look, our pipe isn't really flexing, our clamps are. So these cheap $3 aluminum clamps need to be heavier. We may have to come up with some different attachments. As you can see here, the twisting is actually in these clamps. These are, these are actually moving. So this piece isn't twisting, the pipe isn't twisting, but these clamps are twisting. So we may have to make a more solid clamp, maybe an aluminum clamp with two bolts in it to get that more stable. This is a Pro-Aim Mitchell mount for speed rail and you can see the difference in the clamps here and why we're having problems with these cheap clamps. So the higher up we hold it, the steadier it'll be. If I can hold it up here, obviously I'm not tall enough to hold it that the entire time, but shouldn't really be that bad. And if we can move, if we can move this piece down, it'll give us a little bit closer shot, but it should be a little more stable. So I'm gonna try moving this further up and spinning it around so I'm on the inside of the pole. I'm gonna move this further up here. If this concept works, we'll get much heavier clamps or we may even redesign it with bolts and 
clamps that we build out of aluminum blocks. So I move the bar up higher to handle it so that we can get a little more stability. So we're handling it a little bit higher and not twisting. And I feel like that was a lot better. It's obviously going to take some practice, like any other tool, to get the speed right and to get the shot you want. Shit, this is slipping. So this bar was slipping. May have to put some rubber in there or something to give it some extra, keep it from slipping. That's another possibility. Not a big deal. Not gaff tape, but maybe just a little piece of, a little, couple little chunks of rubber in there. I wanted to make something that everyone could duplicate with just a drill and a few pieces. In our next version, we're gonna do something like this. This is two blocks of steel that are drilled out as a clamp. And what we do is we space these out so that it's round, put a spacer in there, machine it out, and then we clamp them together. That'll hold extremely strong. We'll take these clamps off and we'll make something similar to this. It'll be smaller, it'll have a bigger hole in it, but it'll use four bolts that go through and then tighten down on this entire thing. And that is not gonna move. Even with two clamps, if we were to cut this in half and make two pieces, obviously a much bigger hole, a lot more work. We wanted to prove the concept. We wanna make sure we have all the bugs worked out before we spend a lot of time machining it and spend money on it. We wanted to do 180 from the back to the front on a larger platform. We wanted to have people walking down the sidewalk and be able to come up from one side while we're pushing the dolly on tracks and then come down on the other side. Still working on getting it a little bit more stable so it's not shaky. And we'll give you updates on the design and we'll show you some of the other things that we're doing with it. Here's a shot maybe you never thought of. I didn't before two minutes ago. So I'm just gonna let it fall naturally so it speeds up. See what that looks like. So it starts out slow and So we don't shoot product videos. We don't take video of Blue Moon. We drink it like it's supposed to be. But we set this up to show you what this rig can do. And we built the rig to go out and do bigger arcs. So you could put a bigger piece of speed rail in here, bring it out and bring a 10 foot arc. What we wanted was we wanted something big enough to go around people or a crowd of people. This is just to show you 180 rig and we're doing a 90 degree, but the rig can do a full 180. Now we put a fluid head on the top to mount the camera to if we mounted the camera directly to the bar, we would be able to get more even, or if we raised this up and used longer pieces. Unfortunately, all of our pieces of speed rail are 10 and 12 feet long, and Mr. Dog Poop explicitly told me not to cut them up because we use them as tracks for our dollies and scrims, so cutting them up would just make them useless to us. All I did was set up this wood that we cut for Kugelorises, put it on two apple boxes. Ideally, it would be clamped down to the surface, but for demonstration and a short piece like this, <coughs> we just left it freestanding. But even for a small, close, tight shot, it's a sturdy rig. And we literally built this for nothing. 75, $75 to $100, if you had to buy all the materials, it's really nothing special 
But in comparison to some of the rigs I've seen, it's super heavy duty, super stable. Damn it, I'm out of beer and I'm out of time. If you wanna see prototype number two, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna use this metal truss work to replace the speed rail and see if we can get a bigger radius with more stability. If Mr. Dog Poop finds out you're trying to feed his people warm beer, he will fucking slice your throat.